God speaks through his watchman today so you can know when Jesus Christ is about to return. Learn how to stay spiritually alert so the second coming won't catch you by surprise. Next, on The Key of David with Gerald Flurry. Greetings, everyone. Well, Russia is now threatening uh, NATO with World War III. Their uh, defense minister, uh, Sergei Lavrov, said that, yes, uh, this is very serious, it's real, and we cannot underestimate it. There was a report coming out of the Harvard uh, International Relations Research Center that said uh, if Vladimir Putin had to choose between losing the war in Ukraine and escalating it, that they would give you three to one odds that he would escalate it. That's their view on it. Another report here says the West sends heavy weapons to Ukraine except Germany. Well, now, why would that be? Here we see Germany betraying the West for the most part. That's an ugly sign of what's coming in the future and something we've been telling you about for some 75 years. How could we possibly know that? Well, it's right there in Bible prophecy. Another report says Germany caught double dealing on Ukraine. They were double dealing on Ukraine. And that shows that they really have a secret support for Russia. Well, what does that mean? Well, it means they're making deals behind the scenes. Something is going on here that uh, there's a lot more to this. There, there is a reason why Germany is doing this. And surely it can't be uh, some noble act for sure. But again, we have been telling you and prophesying for 75 years that Germany is going to betray America and Britain. The, uh, really, the uh, prophetic Israel today. And Bill Magazine saw that Germany actually had a list of the heavy weapons and the, the weaker ones, and they just cut out all the heavy weapons going to Ukraine and then lied about it. But the truth came out in the Bill newspaper. That was uh, quite an embarrassment for Germany, but you remember there is a prophecy that talks about you better be careful with your lovers because it is something that is going to happen in this end time if we don't heed God's message. Notice what it says in Luke 21 and verse 32. But these be the days of vengeance, that all things which are written may be fulfilled. So you better kind of buckle up, because there's a, all of these things which haven't been fulfilled are going to be fulfilled, and there are many of them to come yet. Verse 26, men's hearts failing them for fear, and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth, for the powers of heaven shall be shaken. And then shall they see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory." Now this is all uh, talking about bad news just before the second coming of Jesus Christ, and He has to come back to stop the nuclear war, or there would be no flesh saved alive, according to Matthew 24 and verse 21 in the Moffat translation. But there are over a hundred prophecies here just like this in your Bible. People ought to be talking about it and teaching about it and prophesying about it. Men's hearts failing them for fear and all of that. And when these things begin to come to pass, then look up and lift up your heads, for your redemption draws near. And he spoke to them a parable. Behold the fig tree and all the trees. When they now shoot forth, you see and know of your own selves that summer is near at hand. So likewise you, when you see these things come to pass, know that the kingdom of God is near at hand. The kingdom of God is about to come to this earth. And oh, if you look around, surely we can see that that's our only hope if we really 
really understood what's happening in this world. There are nuclear bombs just proliferating around the world. How is that going to end? Well, it's going to end with Jesus Christ stopping it and coming back to rule this earth. Notice verse 33, Heaven and earth shall pass away, but My word shall not pass away. And take heed to yourselves, lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting and drunkenness and cares of this life, and so that day come upon you unawares. Verse 35, For as a snare shall it come on all of them that dwell on the face of the whole earth. Watch you therefore, and pray always that you may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass, and to stand before the Son of Man." God is talking to His own people. He said, look, you're going to have to be accounted worthy to escape physically and be protected. And it's all happening just before the Second Coming. And there are just many prophecies just like this. Beware of getting into drunkenness and pleasures like that in these terrible, terrible times, because you need to make sure you are spiritual. And if you're going to watch, you're going to have to watch God's way and not the way human beings normally watch. We have to prove where Jesus Christ is. Jesus Christ is the head of His true church, and we have to prove it. We can know where He is. We can absolutely know it. What did Christ mean when He said, Watch and pray always? That's what He said. What did He mean by that? Well, I'll tell you this. He said, if, if you understand prophecy, you have a sense of danger in what's going on in this world. We have to watch. It says in Matthew 24 and verse 42, Watch, therefore, for you know not what hour your Lord does come. It's a time of great darkness. It comes at midnight, the darkest part of the 24 hours. Are we going to be worthy of escape? You have to be worthy, God says. And He's talking to everybody if they're interested in this. Verse 6 says, And at midnight, a period of great darkness, then there was a cry made. See, there was a great cry going out about all of this spiritual darkness, but it does also say that there is light. There is light if we want it in this dark, dark world. Now, this is man's only hope, and he doesn't know, really know that. Most people don't, but they're going to know it shortly. They're going to know it. If you go ahead and see what happens in Matthew chapter 25, in the first 10 or 11 verses, it talks about the foolish virgins. But they waited too late to make it, to save themselves from this horrible nuclear catastrophe that's facing us if we don't wake up. There are many prophecies that tell you that, but the, there's good news here if we're just willing to. Uh, Listen to God. So often, people wait until it's too late, just too late. Wars are lost because they wait too late to prepare and challenge the enemy, usually a tyrant. And that's almost routine in just about everything we do, it seems. Notice, what it says in verse 21 of Matthew 24, For then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world, to this time nor ever shall be. And except those days should be shortened, there should be no flesh saved alive, according to the Moffat translation. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. An absolute promise from God. We're not going to be destroyed. All flesh is not going to be destroyed by nuclear weapons and weapons of mass destruction. Verse 32 says, Now learn a parable about the fig tree. We talked about that before. 
Then verse 34, Verily I say unto you, This generation shall not pass till all things be fulfilled. All things are going to be fulfilled. Now, that's all these prophecies, and some of them are certainly not pleasant. And then verse 37, But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking and marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark. In other words, they were just carrying on with their life as usual, even though Noah was warning them about the coming flood. And then verse 39, And knew not until the flood came and took them all away, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. You see, people are not going to be expecting it. They're just going on with their own lives as usual, their sports and their, their entertainment and whatever they like to do. They have put pleasures ahead of God. And that's the way it is in this end time. God says it's going to be just like it was in the days of Noah. They're not going to be aware until it's too late. Too late. Peter talks about watch unto prayer. What, is, what does he mean, watch unto prayer? Well, watch unto prayer. In other words, and have contact with God. This watching, you have to get through to God and let Him show you where we are so we're not deceived. Only God can reveal where we are in Bible prophecy and where, what all of these world events mean right now. We can know all that if we want to. If we, it's right there in our Bibles if we're willing to prove it. But there's more to it than this. I'll show you here. Let's look at Isaiah 56 and verse 9. All you beasts of the field come to devour, yea, all you beasts in the forest. Now, he's illustrating something to you that we all ought to see. This is the condition of it with Israel in this end time. And if you don't know who Israel is, Write for our book on the United States and Britain in prophecy, and it will explain that to you in detail. He says, Here you, you've got all these beasts surrounding the house. You're a type of Israel. And you have watchdogs, and they're sleeping, and they're blind, and they don't bark. They cannot bark. You know why they cannot bark? That's what it says here because they don't know what God's plan is, and they don't know what all these events mean. This is not a real watchman. It's a type of the problems that our nations are in today in Israel. Beasts around the house, a type of all is happening in this time to Israel, prophetic Israel. And you need to know who that is. We explain that in our literature all the time. But notice what it says in verse 9, uh, talking about all the beasts in the field come to devour. Verse 10, His watchmen are blind, they are ignorant, they are all dumb dogs. They cannot bark. They cannot bark, sleeping, lying down, loving to slumber. They want an easy life. They want smooth things, and they cannot understand, because you can never have God reveal His truth to you if you're living like that, and you have leaders like that, if you have watchmen like that. They'll never tell you what God is planning for man and what correction He is giving them at times. They cannot even bark. They can't even bark because they don't know anything to bark about. They're deceived about what the, all these events mean, and they try to tell you good news, and, oh, everything's going to be okay, but it isn't okay. It's uh, fiercely frightening. And we do need to have that sense of danger and know what is happening so we can Go to God, and He will, He says, He will protect us. He will look after us, as He always has if they or the people obeyed Him. 
just think about, well, why can't the, the, the dog bark like that, like he should? Because he hasn't had the truth revealed to him. Last God's watchman, singular, has had it, had it revealed to him. Isaiah 21 and verse 6 has this to say about watchman. It means to shine, to be bright, to bring out into light. That's what we need. We need light. We need to shine. We need to see in this darkness, this worst darkness of all. Verse 6 says, Set a watchman, one singular watchman, set a watchman. Let him declare what he sees. See, God can set a watchman. Verse 10, That which I have heard of the Eternal of hosts, the God of Israel, have I declared to you. I heard it from God. He gave it to me. I heard it, and I've declared it to you. And that's what we need most of all. The Gesenius Lexicon says this of watchmen, to guard, to keep safe, to preserve, to preserve loving kindness. God wants to protect us. Verse 7 says, This watchman, he hearkened diligently with much heed. He really heeded what God said. And he was diligently giving much heed. That's pretty impressive. See, in other words, if you, when, when uh, people should be able to look to God's people, uh, God's message, and know that they really are getting to the source of news and what it means. Most people don't know what it means. And we all should know. We should know. Notice Ezekiel 33 and verse 7, So you, O son of man, I have set you a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore you shall hear the word at my mouth. It's watchman, singular. And he said, You hear this word at my mouth. God chooses a watchman for this end time. It's an end time setting. And warn them from me, God. The message comes from God. There is a message of God being proclaimed and thundered to God's people today. That's what your Bible says. It's, it's that way. And that man, that watchman, is chosen by God. And he reveals what's coming and how you can protect yourself and how I can protect you if you'll heed this message. So this man, verses 8 and 9, warns the wicked of Israel, and that causes him to save his life physically. And that's the way it is. God says, okay, if I give you a message, you deliver it. But if you deliver it, you're going to uh, overcome, and you're going to share David's throne with Jesus Christ forever, and rule over the earth and the entire universe. If we'll just get behind His message and deliver it, that's the kind of reward He gives those people. God appointed a singular watchman. Singular word. God set Him in office. He did all that. And He's talking to the people about what? What does the watchman tell the people? Well, let's take a look. The thing that we uh, need to be aware of is this is coming right out of God's mouth. Don't forget that it's coming right out of God's mouth. And only God can show us what is coming. Only God really knows and understands all these events. You can. Uh, Oftentimes, maybe call them watchmen, but look, that's not the way God works. He works through a watchman and with a lot of loyal supporters who really know this is Christ leading, not a man, and they're thrilled to be a part of it. All of them are thrilled. The watchman, everybody. 
because it's so, you're so honored just to know and understand what is coming from God's mouth. What is coming out of God's mouth? So we have to be careful how we look at this word watchmen. They really, uh, when you talk about watchmen, well, they're usually uh, in the depths of evil. Uh, and really, that's in that, that, if that word is used correctly, it's watchman. So let's look at uh, verse 11 to see how serious this is. Well, we can start with verse 10. Verse 8 says, When I say, God's talking, then verse 10, Therefore you, O son of man, speak unto the house of Israel. Thus you speak, saying, If our transgressions and our sins be upon us, and we pine away in them, how should we then live? See, God said, When I say this now, and you're kind of, we're just, people are just pining away in their sins. They're degenerating in their they're, they don't understand much of anything. It's embarrassing how ignorant some of our leaders are even. It shouldn't be that way. God wouldn't have it that way if we were heeding His message. But verse 10, if you look at the word uh, pine away, it can read, my tumors run with corrupt matter. They just use that example. In other words, we can just be rotting away, literally, in our, with our drugs and our sins and our illnesses because of, uh, we're violating the laws, the physical laws that Jesus Christ paid for by uh, being beaten savagely. Like and to the point that he was more marred than any man ever to pay for our physical sins, and then there's then his blood for our spiritual sin. What a wonderful blessing that is! Verse eleven, say unto them, as I live, says the Eternal God, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked turn from his way and live and live. Turn you, turn you from your evil ways. And why will you die, O house of Israel? Pretty strong words. He wants us to live individually and, and collectively. Herbert Armstrong used to talk about, well, if, if you don't put your heart in God's work, you don't grow. You just degenerate. And that's true spiritually. Notice verse 30. Also, you son of man, the children of your people still are talking against you or about you by the walls and in the doors of the houses. Speak one to another, every one to his brother, saying, Come, I pray you, and hear what the word that comes forth from the Eternal. And they come unto you as the people comes, and they sit before you as my people, maybe before television, and they hear the, your words, but they will not do them. For with their mouth they show much love. They talk about love all the time, but their heart goes after their covetousness. Then verse 33, And when this comes to pass, lo, it will come. Then shall they know that a prophet has been among them. They're going to know that a prophet was among them. So the watchman is also a prophet. That mean, means that God has revealed His truth to that prophet. Watchman. And if we heed it and listen to God's message, He says, I'm going to protect you. I want you to live. Until next week, this is Gerald Flurry. Goodbye, friends. All our literature is available free of charge at no cost or obligation to you. Request Winston S. Churchill, The Watchman, How to Pray, and Matthew 24, Christ's Most Pivotal Prophecy. Order now. The preceding program was a paid presentation of the Key of David, brought to you by the Philadelphia Church of God.